on the 6th of February 2018, the title of my episode, The Trump Market, Fake News. As many are aware, the market is in a correction, I think we'll call it that. Uh, basically, it fell 1,600 points on uh, Monday, and we'll see what Tuesday has in store. That was coming after Friday's loss, and that triggered a global uh, loss across the uh, Asia and other markets. Uh, we continue today. We were reminded of a maximum of uh, Dr. Alan Greenspan. He sees uh, bubbles in both the uh, stock and equity markets. There are two bubbles. We have a stock market bubble. We have a bond market bubble. bubble excuse me. He was uh, speaking to uh, Bloomberg TV, I think, at the end of the day. The bond market bubble will be uh, essentially the critical issue. The Federal Reserve Channel predicted a rise in interest rates. Uh, Feted over the national uh, debt and uh, budget crisis. National debt, in fact... Uh, Tomorrow, they'll have to either decide or do a long-term. We're dealing with fiscal uh, on a sustainable uh, long-term outlook in which inflation will take hold. He added, in addition, in, excuse me, in the fact that uh, I was uh, very uh, surprised in the State of the Union, that was won by D.J. Trump, with all of these uh, new initiatives that were not funded, and I think uh, we are... Uh, Getting to the point now that this is a breakout, it's going to be uh, inflation on the upside. The only question is when. Uh, Dr. Greenspan noted that productivity levels, and this was something talked about in the uh, 2016 campaign about productivity levels. Now, what had happened there was that during the administration of Barack Obama, productivity stayed in the 60s. Now it is... Uh, the uh, south side of about 63 but the problem is the reality and this is what happens when you try to bring this so-called alternative facts into the field of macroeconomics it does not work out that way we have plenty of big data to rely upon we don't rely upon fake news yes there is uh, situations there where it used to be economists that worked it for banks etc remember those days uh, that uh, would uh, promote up the economy uh, better than it was. But those were the days before social media. Now we have various analysts. Now uh, many of these analysts are employed by people that have vested interest, no doubt about that. But because of the uh, acceleration of opinions, whether it be CNBC, whether it be Bloomberg, and Reuters, the BBC, many of these uh, people out there... Uh, economics.com and and uh, x.com and, and several other people. We're in the analytics business at Cranston Economics. Uh, at Trend used to be Cranston Economics. Uh, but now it's Cranston Analytics. But anyway, there are many, many people in the business. There are thousands of different opinions. It's up to business types, stock market investors, etc. to uh, look through the various opinions and see which opinions are quote-unquote on the money. Now, Dr. Greenspan made a very famous speech in 1996 at the right-wing uh, American Enterprise Institute where he coined the word, word irrational exuberance. Now, irrational exuberance is not necessarily fake news, but when you get alternative facts and they're pushed via the official uh, Twitter side of D.J. Trump, or via the, the Trump administration and the various minions there at the Trump administration and in the Congress by little Paulie Ryan, etc., and these various Republicans and their uh, talking points. The problem is you can say anything. And we had people come into the market that were new to the market. Now, we don't know yet as uh, we uh, gave an assumption uh, on... Uh, Numbers, man, that's our macroeconomic presentation. It'll be up, and hopefully it will get it linked uh, to this presentation so you can listen to the more technical things. We won't go into that, but the 1,600-point uh, drop is a wake-up call, no doubt about that. But beyond that, as Dr. Greenspan says, uh, or said, the whole idea of the uh, tax cuts, 
1.5 trillion dollars are not paid for they want to pay for it on the backs of, of working people the working poor working people the working class and uh, to a certain extent uh, the middle class the broad middle class the idea of someone getting a 75 uh, a buck 50 excuse me uh tax uh, relief as per day it was about $75 a year uh, they have at this uh, particular uh, clerical functionary would have received. Now Trump was in uh, Pennsylvania talking about uh, people uh, receiving uh, $100, $1,000 bonuses. Some at Walmart they were um, bonuses uh, that uh, amounted to uh, $200 to $1,000. Those are one time uh, situations here, and this is from CNBC. The biggest tax cut could lead to the demise of his beloved. It's called bull market. Trump's biggest legislative accomplishment may lead to inflationary conditions. It will lead to inflationary conditions because the problem here. I don't want to get too much in economics, but the problem here is the Atlanta Fed had the audacity to talk about five percent to five and a half percent. I couldn't even believe it or even 4.5% GDP uh, growth. That does not uh, work out. That would be inflationary. First of all, it would not be sustainable. The Republican tax overhaul, this is again from CNBC, which is self-proclaimed a king of debt. Trump sound into law in December. Lowers the corporate rate to 21%. They were paying about 22 Congressional Budget Office has already estimated a deficit of uh, $1.5 trillion over 10 years and $136 billion in this fiscal year, 2018. It will be ironic and politically costly to the president and his uh, GOP cronies. This is from William Haas. I, I substituted the word Republicans for cronies. If it uh, as uh, seems increasingly likely to tax cuts to regulation, and the problem is when you open up the quote unquote spigots, whether it be in uh, the uh, uh, oil fields uh, off of the uh, coast uh, in the national forests, with this deregulation uh, situation, even if you raise your GMP say from uh, two point uh, excuse yeah two point three percent. Whatever to three percent, three point three percent, you bring on inflation. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, then this is the problem right there. First, by overestimating the already strong economy, the economy is uh, strong coming out of the depression and on eight years of Barack Obama. And by adding to it a larger national debt, the Republicans during the Obama eight years continually talked about the deficit. But they're adding to the deficit. Now, they did the same thing on the G.W. Bush. And we know how that came out. Only a fool would want a uh, depression. And that's what happened on the G.W. Bush. On a trickle-down uh, Reagan, they almost bit the dust there. The market dropped. But that was a much smaller economy. That's 1987, I believe. They they point to that one. But this is not 18, 1897. This is not 1997. Enough of that. Let's move on to the other uh, shenanigans uh, going on here. Um, the audacity Trump called the Democratic lawmakers who didn't applaud him treasonous on American. Well, the problem is... <laughs> This is it was in Bell Ash, Ohio. He lambasted uh, Democrats uh, who did not applause as he related uh, positive numbers uh, for African American and Latino unemployment during his State of the Union. He accused them of being un-American, and uh, this is back to E.J. Dion's uh, dictator, uh, or, uh, authoritarian. Uh, Treaties that he wrote. We had that up uh, yesterday. In other words, on the positive side, on the positive news like this, they are like the dead and the un American, he said. And he went off script during the speech on his tax cuts. Somebody said treasonous. I mean, yeah, I guess, uh, why not? We shall uh, call uh, that treason. Well, those are very, very strong uh, words. Uh, I wonder what we're going to say here. He didn't have anything to say about the 60. Actually, it was a 1,150-point uh, drop in the Dow when it all was finished up, but it went down to 1,600. Had nothing uh, to say about that at all. Uh, 
besides assaulting the uh, Dead of Silence, uh, he uh, recounted his electoral victory in Ohio. Well, he may be recounting that, but uh, it doesn't stand. If the economy is not in a very good uh, position, he's got uh, problems. The unemployment rate for African Americans really jumped in uh, January. Yeah, it did. And see, this is where we go into the fake news part. You start dealing with big data, as at the Bureau of Labor Statistics they do. You, uh, Although it went down in December, it went up. We have uh, at... Uh, on our numbers, man, Cranston Analytics, we talk. Of, we have a seesaw model there, and it is seeing and sawing. Now, this is a so small company called Schaefer Corp, uh, Cylinder Manufacturer outside of Cincinnati. It only has 126 workers, and they got a thousand dollar bonus. But this is part of the rah rah program based upon this uh, irrational exuberance. Is it otherwise called the psychology of the market. We won't spend a lot of time on it here. We got enough uh, schemes of DJ Trump to deal with uh, here. Uh, this was from the Washington Post. Uh, big headline, Asian markets falling. Dow, Dow sees historic drop as inflation fears rock the market. Dr. Greenspan covered that in the last of December. The Democrats are going to release uh, a rebuttal to the infamous memo. Now, this... This memo here was a cherry-picked operation put out by Nunez, or, yeah, it is Nunez, and Alan uh, Schaaf uh, announced uh, the voting results saying the Republicans' attack on the Justice Department, the FBI, uh, showed desperation on their part. No doubt about that. Uh, they'd be compared to the Saturday night uh, massacre. Uh, he blasted the uh, chairman, Nunez, Nunez, New as here for his handling of that issue. But part of the problem is that this issue was in the news, uh, and since it was in the news, uh, and it will go out of the news. This memo is a side issue, believe it. Now people are focused on the economy. One Republican on the panel, Michael Conway, he's from Texas, said he was not aware of any coordination between Nunez and the White House. I just can't imagine Nunez would be, uh, can't imagine he'd be involved. Well, this is the whole thing. Uh, I think people have said that it was uh, coordinated uh, there, and the articles have been uh, written about it, uh, period. And with the Democratic memo going uh, public, uh, Trump uh, could decide uh, to uh, keep it a secret. Well, if he does, uh, this just does Trump in. Before Monday, Trump changed uh, a charge, excuse me, in the tweets that uh, Schaaf uh, leave, uh, leaves a closed-door committee hearing to illegally leak confidential information. It must be stopped suggesting the president may decide not to allow Democrats to make it uh, public. It doesn't really matter because if he doesn't, this four-page uh, GOP uh, thing here on this is on uh, this uh, character named Carter Page. If they don't, it's much more powerful if he doesn't make it out <clears throat> than it uh, makes it out because it's an issue there. Lawmakers were uncertain uh, Monday if uh, Steve Bannon was going to show up, indicating they are starting uh, to lose uh, patience. Now, uh, this uh, the committee is scheduled to interview uh, Steve uh, Bannon of alt-right uh, uh, fame on a Tuesday. That's today. He may or may not show up. Who knows if he does or he doesn't. On the Senate side, Senator Drew Grassley, he's uh, from uh, Iowa. And Senator Graham from uh, South Carolina uh, released a heavy redacted version of their memo urging the investigation, uh, urging the uh, Justice Department to, to investigate whether uh, the uh, Christopher Steele, he used to be uh, in the British intelligence, lied to the FBI, uh, FBI... Steele offered a now famous a dossier. Well, yeah. The uh, document made public by Grassley indicates that the Senate Judiciary Committee launched its own inquiry in response to a report by the Washington Post about Steele and the firm that hired him. That's called Fusion uh, GPS. It accused Steele of misusing the FBI by the contact with reporters. Steele uh, declined uh, to comment. An attorney did not immediately. Uh, uh, Show any uh, appreciation there? Uh, let's let's go to uh, 
stock market uh, crumbles and a vicious sell-off as gridlock uh, on the trade. Now, this is something we had up here, a route in global equities deepened in Asia on Tuesday as inflation worries uh, grip, uh, grip excuse me, the uh, financial markets, ascending the U.S. Uh, futures uh, sinking further into red after Wall Street uh, suffered its biggest Declined since 2011 in a vicious sell-off there. The S&P uh, futures fell uh, 3 po- 3% at, to a form of low, uh, many futures, excuse me, for low in Asia, extending their losses from a record high peak uh, a week ago to, uh, to uh, 12%. And it shows the effects here in Asian Pacific shares outside of Japan Slated a 4.3 percent, which would be the biggest fall since the yuan's devaluation shock in uh, 2015. The Nikkei uh, uh, dived, uh, let's see, 6.8 percent to a four-month low. While in uh, in Taiwan, uh, they lost 5.5 percent. In Hong Kong, the Hang Seng lost uh, 4.9 percent. So this is some of it. Uh, we didn't get uh, Taiwan on the numbers man report. We got them now. And uh, since the last autumn, investors have been betting on uh, gold, the Goldilocks economy, solid economic expansion, etc. It's some of a strategy from the Mitsubishi uh, Stanley Morgan operation there. Uh, the triggers for sell-up was sharply... Uh, Rise in uh, bond prices. Uh, data that showed U.S. wages increased uh, there. So some of the things that the uh, CBOC uh, volatility index uh, closed, following uh, the f- uh, closely followed fear index, measured uh, expectation of near-term uh, volatility had dro- had had, uh, had uh, jumped. 20% to 30.71. Sorry about giving you this, but this is just some of the stuff here. Uh, for the several months uh, when uh, the uh, stocks and uh, commodities, uh, risk takers had been winners, which uh, is what hedge funds now manage um, 3.2 trillion, having uh, this is from again from Mitsubishi, so as a big sell off. Uh, going on here um, in uh, those markets and even drop there. We won't really worry much about that. Uh, the big, uh, the big uh, fall. Now, how does this re- reflect in the polls? Well, the polling on Monday is the latest thing we have. We have DJ Trump at 40% in uh, Gallup and at 49 in uh, Rasmus in the first time. I think he, I hadn't checked on where he is, but is tied with uh, disapproval. Wrong track, uh, right track at 42. This is Rasmussen here. Uh, we have Mama uh, approval rating at 46%. We'll go into it. Um, the Economist YouGov at 44%. Uh, Reuters at, well, this congressional one. Where is it? Reuters. Uh, generic ballot. Uh, Democrats have six at Reuters, two at Mama. Um, Five at uh, Yugo, the Economist poll, or two, two of them here that uh, are out here in uh, uh, Illinois. We ask America, that's the Man- Illinois Manufacturers poll, has uh, uh, Pinker, I think. Uh, wait a minute. At uh, 30, these are various people. Uh, she's up by uh, 13. It doesn't matter very much there. But let's look at the Monmouth University uh, Polling uh, Institute. Here, uh, Republicans gain on Democrats in generic uh, ballot. This is a poll uh, there out of uh, West Long Branch, New Jersey. Trump's uh, approval ratings have bounced back from critical lows registered in uh, uh, last month. As more Americans see the president as having achieved some legislative uh, success. Now here he stands at 42% approval and 50% disapproval. While this uh, net rating uh, continues uh, to uh, dwell in the negative territory, this is an improvement from in December he was at 32%. So they look at a 5% uh, improvement, but 
Where is that? The current level marks a return to ratings that he uh, received in the late summer uh, and late fall of 2017. Majority of Americans, 55 percent, say that uh, Trump has been at least uh, somewhat successful at getting uh, Congress to pass his legislative agenda, while 41 percent say he has not. Uh, the mark is a revisal from uh, December before the uh, tax uh, situation. Now, this is where it's open. Opinion is currently divided in the landmark tax reform. 44% approve it. 44% disapprove of it. Perhaps import, and more importantly, fewer Americans, 36%, believe that their own federal tax will go up under the plan than uh, felt the same when the bill was passed. Uh, the final legislation... Let's see. The, this marks okay. The uh, only forty-two percent say Trump has been successful with Congress. Fifty-three percent said he has not been uh, successful. Getting oh, this is forty-one percent uh, anyway. This is in the poll as we dive. It's currently divided on landmark. Okay, tax reform. We don't want to go over that again. Overall, 37% said Trump's first year agenda has focused a lot on issues important to the average American. 34% has said it's a little uh, issue there. So it's it's mixed. The president devoted a significant amount of his State of the Union address. We already talked about that on the growing economy. And his a new tax It looks like the needle has uh, moved the Republicans' uh, direction since the passage of tax bill. That's of Dr. Patrick Murphy. Murphy, he is a director of the independent uh, Monmouth uh, University uh, Polling Institute. The majority of interviews in this poll were conducted before Trump delivered his speech on uh, Tuesday night. We look ahead in 2018. Uh, Democrats are currently hold a, na- a narrow edge on the. Uh, Generic ballot. We've talked about that for a very, very long time. But at this stage of the game, the generic ballot does not mean very much. The public is split on a feeling of optimism, uh, 50% uh, versus uh, 45% pessimistic view there. We would see where that will change after this is conducted. Uh, using the same question employed by Gallup uh, during Watergate, 38% of the American public said that Trump should be impeached. Oh, boy. And compelled to leave, uh, 57% said he should not be impeached. Uh, these uh, results were similar to the findings from July of 2017. The Monmouth poll when, uh, let's see, 41% uh, supported impeachment, 53% did not up slightly. Another issue the polls have found 58% of the public expressed at least some worry about the possibility of uh Democratic Republic of Korea launching a nuclear attack on U.S. territory. This is a similar to 60% uh, who felt similar in August of 2017. That is that. Now, if we look at uh, Gallup. Who, Gallup is evidently the uh, Cadillac of the posters here. They have him at 40% and 57% disapprove. Uh, last week before that, the 21st through 28th of January, he was at 38%. So he's up two percentage points in their uh, uh, poll, and he's up 4% from the first of the year, uh, 1st of January. Uh, it was uh, only at uh, 36%. So it's sort of how we're at, uh, here. We were looking, The reason we went to this was there's an article in, uh, or on the Hill, uh, Hill publication, uh, on the 2nd of February, Republicans are feeling better about their prospects in the midterm election by recent polls that show their numbers are improving. Well, we'll have to see on that. When I'm looking at some of the numbers, uh, you... Yeah, you have even done better than you thought. That's what old Trump told. Uh, that is what Trump said. Anyway, some posters were there. Uh, 
Winston, uh, David Winston and Maya Miller of the Winston Group gave a presentation there, views on the middle class America's views on the tax plan opportunities for 2018. And they cite the Marmot poll, which we already cited here. The Reuters uh, released on Wednesday show, but Trump's approval rating had uh, ticked up in the past week. Well, maybe one or two points. The Reuters poll, uh, let's see, had a better uh, jobs and employment than the Democrats at uh, 37.9% to uh, 27.8%. The number of and against Republicans in different states has moved dramatically. That's according to James Lashford. He's a senator from Oklahoma. We are about uh, four or five uh, points uh, they list out. Anyway, the swing uh, in the polling has been uh, matched by swing in a sentiment. Well, yes and no there. Uh, these numbers are preliminary. Democrats on Friday dismissed the optimistic uh, talk from Republicans. And what has happened now because of Monday and the drop, a lot of that will disappear. Uh, for candidates, the uh, RNC uh, has uh, taunted their Young Guns program. Uh, they have either completely failed to launch or fizzled out. Simply put, the House Republicans' offensive opportunities are non-existent, as is from... Uh, uh, oh, Ty Laura, spokesman for the uh, Democratic National uh, Committee. Um, and some character, uh, who is this? Well, oh, Jeff uh, Walden, he's from Oregon. One of few Republicans, I guess, in Oregon. The Democrats have completely overplayed their hand when uh, Nancy Pelosi said $1,000 or $2,000 is uh, crumbs. People in West Virginia and rural Oregon got a thousand dollars, a lot of money. Well, a thousand dollars is not what it used to be. It is, if they get the thousand dollars, if they get less than a thousand dollars, well, it's all up there. It depends also on the rate of inflation. Uh, if you get a thousand dollars, you get a thousand dollars. But if inflation is up and you pay more for your uh, basic staples, uh, depending on what the gasoline costs, some factors there going up and going uh, down. Now, they also state in this article the uh, Dow being up 6% year to year to, uh, is posting. But a lot of this Koch brothers, uh, Koch brothers, excuse me, uh, <laughs> spending $400 million uh, plus uh, dollars. The Republicans say the congressional districts drawn to favor Republicans will give them another advantage. No doubt about that. Not in Pennsylvania, but in some other places. Seldom do you have a elec- uh, wave election year, 2010, uh, followed by redistricting, and we had uh, 2011. There are a lot of seats uh, that are pretty baked in. That's including the wall and well. Yeah, and Pelosi, uh, last year's special election, of course, that was in uh, Georgia 6. We were able to use Nancy Pelosi to help us in the race. Well, yeah and no. I mean, uh, this... This Alexander Bolton has wrote this article on the 4th of February. Uh, that would have been on, let me see when it was the 4th of February. On uh, on Sunday, I guess. Before the big uh, drop, as one would say it. Let me uh, grab some of the other uh, news here. Make sure we get everybody here. Uh the, we congratulated the Philadelphia Eagles on winning their uh, Super Bowl. Several Eagle players, uh, Eagle players, uh, will skip the House White House celebration. Mr. Malcolm Jenkins and uh, Mr. Uh, Chris Long. He's a defensive end. He's a safety. Malcolm Jenkins and Tere uh, Smith, uh, a wide receiver. Uh, they just simply don't anticipate in. Uh, being there, several uh, players last year from the Patriots skipped the White House ceremony after they won the Super Bowl. Tom Brady, but he also missed the one on the Barack Obama, so I guess he's an equal opportunity person. We read uh, the news just like everyone else, and you see Donald Trump's tweets like uh, tweets uh, something uh, Smith said in January. We have 
those conversations in the locker room, uh, just like everyone else does in the workplace. We are very informed about what goes on, and we're trying to continue to educate ourselves. He blasted uh, players. This is DJ Trump by calling them SO, uh, SOBs. And they have remembered this. I'm not going to the White House. Are you kidding me? Long said. Pardon my take uh, on a, a podcast. Long, who played for the Patriots last year, skipped it also. He could running back uh, Lurganti Blunt, who played for the Patriots last year, also skipped the visit of last April. So, in other words, uh, they are moving on. Uh, it's interesting. One of the uh, accusers of uh, DJ Trump, Ms. Uh, Rachel Corks, uh, uh, she's 35. She's running as a Democrat for House Seat uh, 88 in the state of Ohio. It's a rural district located outside of Toledo, Ohio. It's currently held by some Republican. And that district uh, that voted uh, for Trump, a flip from 2008 to 2012 when it went for Barack Obama. Corks, um, in uh, October 2016, said Trump kissed her without a consent when she was a receptionist at uh, Trump Tower. I think my voice should have been heard then, and I am uh, still fighting to be heard now. Americans are really upset with politics as usual, and I want to be a voice for them, uh, Crook said uh, to Cosmopolitan, who first reported her campaign. She's an Ohio native and currently director of international S- student recruitment at uh, Heidelberg University. She told Cosmopolitan that uh, she hopes she can uh, help create more jobs and ensure access to affordable health care and help fix Obamacare. Trump, of course, denied uh, the uh, charge. Uh, out there, and this is Cosmopolitan. I haven't looked at it in a while. It occasionally pops up. Uh, Rachel Crook, uh, Cook, Corks, is uh, running uh, for uh, the House. Cosmopolitan has learned an exclusive. She added her name uh, to the record list of women candidates since the Women's March. They go a little bit different at Cosmopolitan. Uh, here, uh, she uh, brought hope that she might help uh, sway in an election by adding a voice to the course of women uh, pulling uh, back the curtain on the scandal uh, marred a candidate. Trump still hasn't been accountable for his uh, alleged behavior. She's taken direct action. I think that a lot of people see a value. This is a business term in my campaign. But I hope uh, more uh, do uh, there and uh, rural Ohio help create jobs, etc. Charter schools there, she uh, notes, are uh, given about a billion dollars each year. She wants to fix the uh, state education system. She has worked uh, primarily in student affairs at universities and is now director of international Student Recruitment, Heidelberg University, OSO, okay, I didn't notice, in Northwest Ohio. What I have uh, learned working especially with uh, international students, uh, it seems uh, very polarized in uh, politics. She has uh, been uh, backing the Ohio State Democratic Party, and if she wins, uh, has the backing, excuse me, in the May primary, she'll face uh, two incumbents, Bill Ranicki, uh Face the, uh, the two-term incumbent. I'm sorry about that. Uh, through the district. Nice picture of the lady here. Democrats are uh, here. and uh, But it almost felt like uh, we didn't know that we were out there, she said. I think uh, this is a, this uh, is momentous now that uh, Trump has been elected. That we know there are more of us out there. And uh, so, in other words, uh, Quark's... Uh, said she's always been interested in politics but didn't seriously consider running until women in her uh, liberal resistance group Seneca County Rising uh, suggested that she make she'd make a good candidate and this again is one of those things that are out there so this uh, we'll we'll do the uh, sports we almost forgot here we won't forget that hope 
We'll go to the uh, National uh, Basketball Association, I watch those NBA. The Trailblazers were at the Pistons in the Motor City. Pistons 111 to 91. The Wizards were at the Pacers in Indianapolis. Uh, Wizards 111 to 102. The Magic uh, were at the Heat, a two point game there. Magic 111 to 109. The Jazz uh, were at the Pelicans down in the Big Easy. 133, excuse me, to 109. Uh, Mardi Gras season coming upon us. Anyway, nonetheless, uh, the Hornets were at the Nuggets in Denver, the Mile High City, uh, 121, and Nuggets to 104 for the Hornets. The Bulls were at the Kings, uh, Bull, uh, excuse me, Kings 104 to a 98, and finally the Mavericks were in Los Angeles, Clippers 104 to 101. To college basketball, uh, only one game, uh, number 19, West Virginia, versus number 17, Oklahoma. West Virginia, 75-73 to over Oklahoma. On to the national hockey uh, people. The Ducks of Anaheim and the Maple Leafs. Maple Leafs, 7-4 to was the final there. The Predators and the Islands, Predators, 5-4. to the Rangers and the Stars in Dallas. Stars 2-1 in that contest. The uh, Lightning and Orlis. Orlis 6-2 over the Lightning. And that will do it for the uh, National uh, Hockey League. Uh, the NBA and a college ball. And that was on Monday night. And that will do it also for us. The Trump market. Fake news on the fourth, on the excuse me, on the sixth of February, two thousand eighteen. This is the second program here involving numbers for us tonight on WBRN Radio in Boston and the Boston Red Network. Good day.